So here's a slightly more complicated example of uh, modeling tank flows. Um, so let's say we have now an inflow pipe and water with solute in it is coming in to a big tank. And imagine we have solute in there. Maybe none at the beginning, but eventually there will be some. And then we have outflow coming out. And that is going to have solute in it as well. So um, let's give some quantities for this problem. So let's say uh, <clears throat> the concentration coming in is 200 grams per liter. And the rate at which it's flowing in is two liters per minute. And the outflow is going to be the same two liters per minute. And we'll have to figure out what the outflow concentration is. And the tank starts with no salt in it. So I'm going to say Q of zero equals zero. And let's say, so this is this in brackets, no salt initially. And um, the tank is well mixed and holds initially holds 10 liters of water. What is the amount or the mass, I guess? What is the mass of salt at time t in the tank. All right, so um, again, as I advise, let's concentrate on Q of t, the quantity of salt, the mass of salt in the tank. And at time t. And if you, refer back, if you refer back to the previous video on uh, modeling tank flows, we found that Q prime of T, well, I'll just suppress the of T as I often do. So Q prime of T is equal to F inflow, that's the total inflow rate of salt, minus F outflow. And now we just have to figure out how to express the inflow rate and the outflow rate in terms of the quantities given in the problem. So F inflow should have units of, well, in order to balance the units on the left-hand side, which is mass per unit time, so mass per minute, inflow has to have units of mass per minute. So I'm just going to put mass per minute on this side, or grams per minute. Yeah, let's say grams because we know it's grams. So grams per minute, that's what we're looking for. So that's going to consist of two different pieces. I have an inflow rate in liters per minute, and then I have a concentration in grams per liter. So if in a given minute I get two liters of, of, uh, sol solvent or, uh, of solution going in, then I want to multiply my concentration by that volume of two liters, and that's a per minute quantity. So what I've just done there is I've taken the concentration and I've multiplied it by the rate of inflow to get the overall inflow rate. And in this example, I'm going to leave the C and the R in, in there for generality, but I would put a 200. And the reason I do that is because I don't like to drop my units. And so I have to do a whole bunch of clunky writing, which is G over L here. And then it's good to see this, but it's a lot of writing. So per minute. And so you can see that the units, we, do, we can do arithmetic on units just like we can on numbers. So these units here cancel, and I'm left with grams per minute, which is the correct units for Q prime, so it matches on left side and right side of the equation. And then F outflow is also going to be concentration. So this is concentration coming in, and this is concentration going out, multiplied by R, the volume rate leaving. And so in this example, the concentration going out is going to be the same as the concentration in the tank, which, again, as before, is going to be Q, the, ma the mass of salt in the tank, divided by 
the volume of the tank, and then I have to multiply that by the outflow rate, which is R out, a given number. So now let's put numbers to that, and we get Q. I'll put that um, at the end. So we get uh, the outflow rate is R out is also 2 liters per minute. And we're multiplying that by uh, 1 over the volume of the tank, which is 10 liters. And then I multiply that by concentration Q. And you can see that the liters cancel. And I'm left with quantity of salt, that's mass. The Q has units of grams divided by minutes. And so um, now we can put it all together. And we get Q prime is equal to, uh, let's see here. So we have, um, it's going to be, the concentration in, which is that given 200, multiplied by the rate flowing in. And then that's a plus because I'm adding that salt. And then I subtract C out times R out, but I'll write that out in full, which is R out divided by V times Q. Now I've written it like this instead of with the numbers because here I can identify all the pieces that I have, but I don't have to carry all the specifics around and the units around with it. So um, C in we have is uh, 200 grams per liter, R in is 2 liters per minute, R out is 2 liters per minute, and the volume is 10 liters, and Q is this time-dependent quantity that we're tracking. So here we have an equation that looks a lot like the one that we got um, previously, uh, except that it now has a term in front here. So now I just want to say a couple things about um, the difference between these equations and what we can say about the behavior of a system like this um, before we even try solving. So um, so I'm going to just write this down as, uh, let's say, I'm going to sort of new, new um, um, well, actually, let's go through with this and solve the equation. So we have this Q prime, and what do we do when we're solving a first order? This is a first order linear uh, and now, is this a homogeneous or inhomogeneous equation? I'll give you a second to think about that while I write things down. So once I get everything over to the left-hand side with a Q in it, I'm left with C in times R in, which are just constants. They do not have a Q. So this is a first-order linear differential equation with constant coefficients on the Q terms and an inhomogeneous term. Okay, so that's our classification. And that'll be the same for a lot of these, or all of these tank problems, unless your tanks are doing something kind of magical. Okay, so the method for solving this, well, um, we can use for sure the integrated method of integrating factors. So what do we find? We find the integrating factor is e, there's a one in front of the Q prime, so we don't have to do that divide through by. And now we can just write down e to the r out over v times t q all prime is equal to c in times r in times e to the r out over v times t. And so I've, there I've multiplied through by e to the r out over v times t and rewritten the left hand side going backwards through that product rule. And now I can take an antiderivative. So on this side, I just lose the derivative term, the derivative of the prime, when I take an antiderivative. And on this side, I get a C in times R in times E to the R out over V times T. But an antiderivative with that exponential, uh, that extra factor in front of the T in the exponent means I have to divide by the coefficient on the t, which means multiply by v over r out. And now I have, uh, I can divide through by the e to the r out. Oh, wait, ah, I did, took an antiderivative there. I have to add an arbitrary constant. I need that for my general solution. So now I can solve, I can write down my q of t is equal to, and I'm going to put the c first. Um, just out of habit. So I put a C times E to the minus R out over V times T um, plus 
C in times R in over R out times V. So, um, yeah, got all that. Yes, I did. Okay, so you'll notice this is a time-dependent term. This is just a whole bunch of constants. So what does this solution look like? These are all positive constants. I mean, physically, we have to have those all positive. And so that forms some level that after the exponential dies out, will converge to that. So that is going to be the level of the asymptote. And then what happens to the rest of it? Well, I haven't figured out the value of C, but I know because of my initial condition, there was no salt initially. It has to start at zero. So I can find that C value, but I know that when I do, it'll force Q of zero to be zero. And now I just have an exponential decay to the dashed line. And I didn't go through it before, but in the previous example, I had exponential decay to zero because this term was not there because the R in was, or the C in rather, was zero. Okay, so and now one of the advantages of not putting in all those numbers and dropping your units, which some of you will inevitably do, and I recommend not doing that because what I can now do is I can check to make sure my units all balance. So the term here is not that helpful in terms of checking units. An exponential, the only thing we, we have to check about an exponential is that the exponent has no units. So the term r out over v multiplied by t has to have no units. So what is r out? r out is, r out is measured in liters per minute. Volume is liters and time is minute. And so you can see these all cancel nicely and we have no exponent, no, no units in the exponent. And the other thing we have to check is that this has units of salt, uh, grams of salt, because that's what Q should have. So C in is concentration, that's grams per liter. R in is liters per minute. And O over R out is minutes per liter. And once we, oh, no, and then there's a V, so times liters. So that liter cancels with that, that with that, minutes with minutes, and I'm left with grams. So the uh, expression checks out. And the final thing I want to point out is this level here that it's going to is given by this expression. And if I happen to start right there, that means that my concentration in the tank, instead of being zero initially, would have been this level C in times R in over R out times V, and I would just stay right where I was. Well, what is the derivative of that straight line? It should be zero. So if I say the derivative, when is the derivative equal to zero? That means that C in R in minus R out over V times Q has to be equal to zero. And if I solve this for Q, I find that when I'm at a steady state, a non-changing concentration, I have to have a concentration C in R in divided by V, whoops, no, let's see, R in, and then times V over R out, which is exactly this expression in the solution. So our solutions to these linear first order equations will be steady state plus some exponentially decaying transient. Okay, so that is the most complicated example I'm going to go through here. There are a couple more complicated examples I could talk about, but there, um, maybe I'll leave those for discussion in class.